Hi, my name is Pauline. I'm a second year history student at the University of Portsmouth. I'm creating this video as a resource for other history students that have an interest in furthering their research in colonial history, particularly um, African colonial history. So I'm going to give a few examples of some archives that uh, require perhaps a more in-person experience and um, go over the things that these archives can offer and what sort of things you need to consider before planning your trip to these archives as well. So this resource will help identify photographic sources and paintings from um, Africa in colonialist times, but you'll probably find that these examples will help with finding lots of different sources from other areas of colonialism too. So without a doubt, one of the most useful places to go to would be the National Archives. They hold records that span across a thousand years and within that is a pretty fruitful collection relating to the British colonial histories. And within that you can find some pretty extensive photographic collections as well. So one of the great things about the National Archives is that they have already digitised quite a lot of their materials, so you might find that you've already got what you need before you go. It is currently free to download, but at the moment they've only temporarily um, waived this fee to account for limited reading room space. Either way, you're going to want to familiarise yourself with the discovery page that they offer. This will be an essential tool when planning your research. So for example, when using the discovery page, I might type in photographs of Senegal between 1880 and 1940 and start searching through the results that it offers. You can also use the advanced search option, which is on offer as well. This might help you sort of identify the more particular sources that you're looking at. Once you've identified a source that you're quite happy with and you know that you want to go view, it'd be worth just taking down those details because you might want to use them later when booking a reading room. So it's highly advised that you book a reading room, um, but to do this you will need what they call a reader's pass and um, you'd need to fulfil certain criteria before getting that reader's pass. So I'll talk you through what it is that you'd need to prepare in order to do so. So in order to prepare to get your reader's pass, what you'll need is the following. So you will need an accepted proof of address, an accepted proof of name. You'll also need to watch a five minute mandatory video, which is useful because it will talk you through how to handle documents properly, especially photographs as well. You'll also need to make sure that you're visiting the National Archives in the next 13 weeks so that you can hand in everything um, in terms of your identity as well. So once you've done all that and you've finally achieved your reader's pass, what you can then do is book a reading room. And you can also do this on the online function too. So the great thing about using the online function to book in advance is that you can um, not only tell them how many documents you need to look at, but also what documents it is you need to look at. So when you arrive, your photographs um, or other resources will already be there waiting for you. So the National Archives also put on their own exhibitions. They might not always be useful to what you're researching or again in specifics to photographs or paintings within Africa and British colonies but you might always want to check them out just in case they are quite useful. So for example my last visit to the National Archives they were holding a free exhibition called the 1920s Beyond the Raw and at first I didn't really think it had anything to offer to me but when I went in I saw there was a whole corner dedicated to uh, colonial history within the 1920s and within that, there was some um, information dedicated and photographs dedicated to uh, British colonies within Africa. So this exhibition was totally free. I didn't need any form of reader's pass. I didn't need to book in advance. I could just walk straight in and check it out. Another great resource would be the British Museum. They have a whole section dedicated to the history of Africa and is rich with information and sources surrounding British colonial governments over Africa too. In terms of photographic sources, you'll also find them dotted around the section as well. They'll be on information plaques and will be surrounded with quite a lot of information detailing what the photograph shows or accompanied with a material source too. Another great resource that the British Museum does offer is the Collecting an Empire's Trail. Now, it's not necessarily ring fenced just to African history under the British Empire because it does cover quite a large time span and locations as well. But if you're looking for just a quick in and out, what you can do is just jump online and find their pamphlet and locate exactly where each of those items are. And you can just go straight to those items and see them directly. If you've got a little bit more time on your hands and what you can do, if you're interested in finding out a bit more, is that they have a whole 30 minute or 67 minute trail that you can follow around as well. So what's great with the British Museum is that it's totally free for you to check out. You can just walk straight in if you want to, but there's absolutely no harm in you booking a ticket in advance if you want to be absolutely sure that you can visit. 
I have been throughout um, this year a few times and I've been able to walk in straight away, but you might not necessarily get that as a guarantee. Once again, like I said, it is free for you to visit, but they might have exhibitions that are being um, shown at the time that you're visiting. Again, they might not necessarily be relevant to colonial histories within Africa or present any photographic or paintings within that time either. But it is always worth just checking out what's on at that time to see if it is relevant to you. Again, you would need to pay for a ticket to visit those exhibitions. So sticking to central London, another great example for you to visit would be Tate Britain. Again, it's another one that is subjective to what is being offered at the time, but they do hold excellent exhibitions, which could be really useful for you. So for example, they held an excellent exhibition a few years back relating to paintings connected to the British Empire. And within that, there was quite a focus of British imperialism within Africa too. You can actually find out probably a bit more about this exhibition online than you can in person because of course it's not available to be seen any longer but it's another great example as to why you should always check it out if you're in the area already because it could have a really useful exhibition on at that time. So another really crucial example of an archive that warrants an in-person visit would be the British Library. So the British Library holds a fantastic range of photographic sources and paintings during the British colonial times within Africa. Also located in London, the site will have certain areas that will be off limits for people that don't have a reader's pass. So this is usually where the sources you're interested in will be held. So just like the National Archives, you're going to want to do a little bit of preparation and um, allow a nice chunk of time before your visit. So what that means is that you're going to need to consider a few things. So number one, what you're going to need to do is probably register online and make yourself an account. And once you've done that, what you can then do is move on to booking an appointment. Once you've managed to grab an appointment, what you'd need to bring on site would be identification with you. So that would include things like proof of address and a proof of signature. Proof of signature really means something that has your signature on it, so a passport would suffice. It's definitely worth considering though. So even though there's so many things that you'd need to do prior to your visit, it really does hold quite a lot of different amount of resources. So things like photographs of British officers within Africa, photographs of camps and lots of different sketches as well. It's definitely worth a visit. So last but definitely not least, you'll find the Bristol Archives and the Bristol Archives and the Bristol Museums are interconnected. And of course, being in Bristol, they're really renowned for their links to um, colonialism and the British Empire in itself. So the Bristol Archives literally hold a whole collection named the Empire Collection and has over half a million photographs dedicated to the British colonies. And within that is a pretty comprehensive collection relating to African colonies too. Whilst you don't need to book it in advance um, to see these documents within the search rooms, it's really advised for you to do it online again, just because it will make your life a lot easier. So again, they'll bring those documents to you and you'll be certain that you'll be able to see those documents on the day. In either way, you're going to have to book a room at some point, so you'll need to provide them some of the following. So when you're booking online, it does ask for a small, um, short explanation behind the nature of the research and two reference numbers of the documents that you're looking to see. So again, the museum, as it's connected to the archives, is definitely also worth checking out because there's probably going to be a lot of information surrounding the colonial histories in there too. So this video has covered not only what these archives offer you, but also how to get into these archives and what you need to do when preparing to get into the archives. I know as a student, this is one of the hardest things to get my head around. Please be sure that this is not the only places that you need to go to. You probably will be able to find somewhere a little bit more local to you if you're not in these areas. And there's gonna be a fantastic range of resources available to you online as well. In any case, I hope that you found the information useful to you and happy researching.